What is up, NBL Nation? It is Project Fat, and we are here with another episode of the Extra Point Podcast. I know you guys are ready for it, so I'm going to start it off for you. What's up? <laughs> All right, guys. Today we're becoming quite a few things. Uh, heading to the NFC West, the battle up top, top there between the Hawks and the Rams. Cleveland Browns with their meltdown this year. Panthers are absolutely killing it down there in the NFC South, uh, killing the Falcons down there. Chiefs... Uh, Super Bowl favorite last year, falling apart this year. I'm going to turn it over to you, Bomber. I know you have a little infatuation up there with uh, FCB Draco there. So why don't you tell us uh, something about the NFC West here? Okay, the NFC West, they like to be called the NFC Best, and for good reason. They have some of the most solid teams in the league. They're always competing. But the two at the top right now, you got the St. Louis Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. Last year, the St. Louis Rams owner, Draco, took the division. The year before that, Seattle took the division. They're both 4-1 and one right now, but I'm going to go ahead and give the, uh, the edge to the St. Louis Rams, who are only giving up a league a, a, a league best, only 12 points a game. This Draco defense is on point. I've had to play them. They're very tough. They're very good, and I'm going to give them the edge. They already beat Seattle 24-17 early in the season, and it, as long as their offense can just produce a little bit, just a little bit, the defense is going to take them home. And they're going to win that division. All right, so let's head over to the uh, AFC North here. Cleveland Browns, they seem like a team that every time they give up some picks in the drafts, they say their team's going to do well, and the next season they come out, and it's just terrible. They're in the toilet. And, uh, you know, the owner's having a meltdown on Twitter. Team's having a meltdown on the field. Coach having a meltdown in the locker room. It's it's just a mess in Cleveland. You know, when you're, you're, you're in a division with the defending Super Bowl champion Steelers, uh, you got a great Bengals team, an up-and-coming Ravens team. You, you got to compete, and you know you got you got uh, you know your drunk quarterback Johnny Manziel out there, barely completing passes. You know, just above 50 percent completion. Dude's got 16 interceptions on the year. He's almost double the amount of interceptions as touchdowns. Only through five games, it's crazy. Uh, their offense has been so-so. Points points aren't there though you know the yardage is there they're they're 13th in yards eighth in pass yards so the yards are there with 21st points all that's showing you is they're just turning the ball ball over every time they get opportunity to score it's turning over they need to change that the defense is is just mediocre at best they're they're allowing one of the most points in the league 25 points but again turnovers you know the the yardage just is again mediocre there but they're in the back end for points you keep turning the ball over give the other offenses chances they're going to put points on the board so the cleveland browns got to turn that around if they're going to have any hope of trying to sneak into a wild card on the second half stretch this season here so with that being said why don't we uh turn over to the panthers and how hot they've been this season Okay, the Panthers are off to another hot start, and if you remember last year, and I believe even the year before, they were off to 5-0, and 6-1 and one starts, but there's something different about this Carolina team led by their owner Wildcats this season, and it, it really starts with Bernard Cole averaging 5.1 yards a carry, and it's opening up the pass game, and this guy, C.J. Lawson, is balling out this year. He's playing next to Kelvin Benjamin. Right now, he's sitting at 20 receptions, 497 yards, leading the NBL, and he might be the difference. I spoke with the Atlanta owner earlier today, and I said, are you concerned about this hot start by Carolina? And he said, no, not at all. They are confident over there in Atlanta. They've won the division uh, countless times. They haven't lost the division yet. Uh, this owner is primed. Uh, the, the Atlanta owner is ready. He's, he's, he's a playoff owner. He doesn't look at the beginning of the year. And so they're not buying into the hype of Carolina once again. Uh, I think it's going to be a little closer this year than they think. But I'm going to go ahead and give to, the edge to Atlanta to pull it out because they always seem to have the number of uh, Wildcats and the uh, Carolina Panthers. All right, Fat, no one in here knows the AFC West any better than you are. What is up with the with the Chiefs this year? You know, a lot of people last year had them picking, picked going to the Super Bowl. Uh, they were a favorite to get their second title here, and it's been disastrous. What's up with them? Yeah, you know, you're 100% right, and, and to make it as simple as it possibly can be, it's Bortles. Blake Bortles is the issue there in uh, Kansas City. And it's just crazy to think about. They went after this guy, made him the number one uh, target here in the uh, offseason for free agency, and he's done nothing but uh, destroy this team, to be completely honest. Um, he's done the opposite of what they expected him to do. He's uh, five touchdowns, five interceptions on the season, not even 50% uh, completion percentage. And uh, not only is it the offense or the quarterback not playing well, but it's affecting Jamal, Jamal Charles as well. Last year with Alex Smith, Jamal Charles is averaging nearly five yards a carry. He's barely at two yards uh, per carry so far this season um, so like I said Blake Bortles it, it might be time to send him to the bench I know it's a little too early to say um, but that is the difference there in Kansas City right now 
So yeah, so with that being said, you know, I actually do want to hit on some of the uh, top free agents and stuff like that. You know, I think this year, more so than ever, was uh, kind of having some high expectations for new quarterbacks on teams. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater on the Giants, big free agent signing. A lot of people wanted him, huge contract. Uh, as you mentioned, Blake Bortles with the Chiefs. And then you got the top two picks were quarterbacks for the uh, um, for the Texans and, and the Saints. You know, Saints, Devin Riley picked him up at two. The Texans, Marshall Blair at number one. You know, they were supposed to come in and, and, and turn their franchises around, and none of these quarterbacks are performing. Uh, in a league where you really see the top quarterbacks completing upwards of like 65 to 70 percent completion, none of these guys are at that percent. You know, Blair's at 48 percent completion, uh, Bortles at 47 percent completion, and uh, and Riley and, and Teddy are the only two that are above 50. Yeah, Riley's 55, Teddy's uh, Teddy's 59. Uh, but they're just they're not performing for the teams the the interceptions are, are killing them uh, Riley's got 13 Bortles has got five and and uh, uh, Blair here's got 11 they're they need to cut down the interceptions all around and, and start proving that they can be the quarterbacks that these teams thought and wanted them to be um, so so let's move on real quick here to a couple uh, to a score update you know we had a, a uh, the, the Vikings were, were finally pushing the Lions in this NFC North. Uh, Vikings were three three and one, um, and, and the uh, the the uh, Cardinals down here in the NFC West tough division. Uh, they really turned it around this year. They've had a couple of down seasons. They turn around. They just got a 14-14 tie. Bomber, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm really high on both of these teams right now. They both had a lot of uh, exchanging on personnel. I think Willer's really coming into his own on Arizona, and you can tell uh, by his completion percentage, and you can tell by his just patience in the pocket. He feels a lot more confident uh, coming into this season. And that tie really shows me that both of these teams are playing just as we expected. Uh, nobody likes a tie, but I'll take a tie with both of those teams. Right now, Cardinals are at 2-2-1, two and two and one, and the Vikings are at 3-1-1, one and one, and they're both still in competition for their division and, and possibly a wild card spot down the future. I really like both of these teams. Okay, yeah, then, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about the next game. I think another big game uh, for us to touch on right now uh, would be that uh, Saints uh, game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers divisional game huge win for the Saints first one of the season um, and Devin Riley really really looked the part um, of that first round selection there um, you know 391 yards uh, 100, 391 yards uh, three touchdowns one interception there much different than what we've seen from him so far this game um, you know so great win there for the Saints uh, and, and let me also boost. point out let me point out with the Saints they had 17 uh, first downs this game they were moving the chains that was different. If you look at Devin Riley in the in the past three games, you're going to look at a QBR of 42, 69, and 43. Three touchdowns to eight interceptions. He was not playing well. He comes out this game, he gets his QBR up to 126. He's got three touchdowns with only one interception. And he just they just dominated the ball. Look at the time of possession versus the Buccaneers. They had the ball for 16 minutes. The Bucs uh, just slightly under eight minutes. So they had nearly double the uh, time of possession on their opponent. And this really is good for them because the Saints haven't picked up many divisional wins in the last couple years. And this could be big for their confidence moving forward. You saw a huge game from Nick Gordon, a huge game from Brandon Cooks. If Devin Riley, this number two pick, can live up to the hype, I'd expect the New Orleans Saints to make a nice little run and possibly be a 500 team by the end of the year. No, yeah, you know, sorry about what... that, but 100%. Um, like you said, they, they control the ball. They uh, they use the running back. That's the big thing that I really I really noticed from this game. Um, Mark Ingram had 22 touches um, this game. You know, he didn't have a great average um, on the ground, but uh, they continued to give him the ball. They gave him opportunities. Didn't put so much pressure on Riley, and I think that really helped them um, get this first win. Yeah, and, and the one thing I want to say was, uh, as far as Devin Riley goes, um, completion percentage. You know, uh, I think the Saints have been a team that have been kind of notorious for, for taking some deep shots. Uh, they have a great receiver in Nick Gordon. They have solid receivers around them. Uh, get get your guys the ball. Let them make the plays. And that's something that, that he really did this this week. Um, you know, so far for the uh, for the season, uh, Riley's had 58% completion, 45, 48, 53. And then this last game, first win, 71. Uh, and I really think that's something huge for them. But anyway, so um, I do think that's going to be all the time we have here uh, for our episode. Um, real quick, I want to uh, once again mention uh, our uh, partner here, Hollywood Sports. If you guys are interested in uh, any kind of sim gaming, any sim sports, you check him out. This guy is great. Uh, one of the most lively actors you're going to see here on YouTube. He has a great channel, some great videos on there. So check that out, Hollywood Sports. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into our episode here.